Again, welcome everyone. It's wonderful having everyone here. Um, as we know, today is a special day. We're having a special occasion today, something that we have not yet done at our temple, but something which from now on is going to be an annual event. We will be doing this every year from now on. And the reason why we will begin doing this every year is because of the importance of this event, of the importance of this ceremony. You know, everyone has ancestors. Anyone who is alive has ancestors. The only person who doesn't have ancestors is God because there is nothing preceding God. Otherwise, any being who has proceeded from God necessarily has ancestors. That's true for all humans. For that matter, it's true for literally all living beings. But sticking with humans specifically, in ancient times, the concept of honoring our ancestors was something that was seen as being integral to human society, integral to all spiritual people, to all spiritual civilizations, tribes, etc., and universally so. You know, it's not that, oh, this is an Eastern thing or a Western thing, Asian, European, African. No, there is literally no people in history who did not honor the ancestors previously, in the past. Now, of course, this, is, this has become a foreign concept to the point where now that modernity has descended upon us for the last 150, 200 years, roughly, more or less, um, this practice has receded into the mists of time, unfortunately. And now we have very few people who consciously honor their ancestors. You know, well, this is something that we need to revive. It's something that we're going to revive. It's something that we're going to begin doing in the ISDS, but also that we are going to begin to encourage other people to do as well. Uh, why is this important? You know, there was a interesting uh, British Catholic philosopher, actually, of all people, um, who wrote primarily in the 19 teens, 20s, 30s, uh, G.K. Ch G. K. Chesterton was his name, and very interesting person. He was a very witty writer, very interesting writer, actually, very philosophical. But he said something of great interest. He talked about what he called the democracy of the dead. <laughs> I remember reading this term, and it's, it stuck with me, the democracy of the dead. He was commenting on the concept of democracy as it was being practiced in the Western world in, again, the 1920s, 30s, etc. And he explained how, yes, yes, the concept of democracy is that all the citizens should have a voice. They should have a voice in how things are governed, in the culture, etc. They should have a voice in things of importance. But then he made a very interesting point. Well, what about the voices of our ancestors? What about the voices of those individuals without whom we ourselves would not be here? Without whom we ourselves would not have all of the privileges that we have, all of the conveniences, luxuries, etc. that we have. Without whom there wouldn't even, even be a democracy. You know, again, him speaking as a British citizen in the 1920s. So he called this the democracy of the dead, the idea that indeed our ancestors also are worthy of a voice. In fact, if anything, some could argue even more so than people in contemporary times, because again, they are responsible for who we are. They are truly our fathers and our mothers in this ancient sense. More than this, there is the concept of family as well. We all understand the concept of family. We may have had wonderful families, so-so families. It doesn't matter. We still understand the concept of the importance of family. 
Well, in this way also, family extends not merely to those individuals who presently are alive, but going back historically as well. These individuals who have passed on, some of whom we may have known ourselves, some of whom we never even met, you know, not just our grandparents, not just our great-grandparents, but what about their parents and their parents and their parents, etc. Well, the idea is that these people also are family. They share in our genetic inheritance, and we all have a genetic inheritance. Again, in many cases, we can look at photos of people we never even met, our great-grandparents. And sometimes we'll look at a photo and we'll literally see ourselves in their face. You know, there is that shared inheritance that is there in so many ways, uh, culturally, spiritually as well. And let me talk about that for a moment. We know that, of course, we are all presently practicing Sanatana Dharma, but few of us in this room specifically were born in this tradition. So our grandparents, great-grandparents, etc., yes, they may have had different religions on the surface. However, still, they had a spirituality that was of importance to them. And we need to honor that as well. The idea of honoring the ancestors, and specifically what sometimes is indeed translated as ancestor worship, is extremely important for several practical reasons. First of all, yes, it gives us a sense of continuity, a sense of connection with those individuals who have passed on to the other realm. And what does that do? Well, it makes us once in a while, even if just for a short time, see through their eyes and in this way share their wisdom, share their outlook on the world and not merely see things in a temporal centric, what I have termed a temporal centric sort of way. Just seeing everything around us in terms of today's culture. But no. How interesting is it to see our present day life and even predicament in terms of the eyes, the vision, the perception of people who lived a hundred years ago, two hundred years, five hundred years, a thousand years ago, and to gain that added wisdom of seeing who we are today, but from that perspective. It gives us a form of wisdom that otherwise we would not have access to. That's the first thing that is of importance in honoring, ritually honoring our ancestors. The other thing is this. The ancestors, according to, again, all the ancient cultures, not just Vedic, oh no, you can look into any ancient culture, European, African, uh, Asian, uh, Japanese, etc., etc. They all agree on this uh, next point that I'm going to make. An aspect of the ancestors is still very much in existence. We don't have physical access to it, but a part of our ancestors is still alive, in other words, and specifically getting to the Vedic concept. This is known as Pitruloka, that is, the realm of the ancestors. Our ancestors still have the ability to impact us, to affect us positively in a beneficial sort of way, even though they may have left a hundred years ago, two hundred years ago. An aspect of them, an energetic aspect of them is still there, operative within the cosmos. And as a result of this, because of this, when we choose to seek their benediction, to seek their blessings upon our lives, they do precisely that. In fact, today, unfortunately, at first, they shed a tear in gratitude that today we even bother to remember them. Because again, in the past, people did. Today, no one cares about the ancestors. So first, when we appeal to them today, first, actually, interestingly, they express some gratitude toward us. Thank you for not forgetting. They actually whisper to us. And then, then, secondarily, they give us their blessings. Now, why is this of importance? Well, can we receive too many blessings? with the struggles that we have today, with the problems that we have today, with the challenges, the so many things that we go through. We need the blessings, certainly of God primarily, but we need the blessings of our parents. We need the blessings of our guru. We need the blessings of 
the devas, the devis. We need the, bless, the blessings of the, of the yakshas and yakshis, of the spirits of nature. We need the blessings of all higher beings, including the blessings of the ancestors. When we have the blessings of those individuals who are our hidden family, see again, there is the family that we know of because they're still alive or they maybe passed away not too long ago and we still have memory of them. But envision this, we also have a hidden family. Those people who we never think about them because they lived 150, 200 years ago. But they are our family, just as much as our parents, our brothers, sisters, cousins, anyone else. So when we have these special blessings from those individuals who truly care about us because they are related to us, it gives, it gives us a special sense of comfort that is of great importance. So the reason why we do this Pittara Yagya, this Pittara Puja, is again all of these things, all of these things that I have mentioned. But more also, socially, it gives us a sense of continuity. We no longer feel alone in the world when we understand that not just in a horizontal sense do we have individuals who we care about and who care about us, friends, family, etc. But then there is a continuity stretching back throughout history as we know that there will be a continuity stretching forward into the future as well and we feel ourselves being a part of that flow of continuity of family. So this is something that gives us a tremendous feeling of wholeness when we connect with our ancestors. So this is why this is of importance. And this is why the International Sanatana Dharma Society is going to revive the concept of ancestor puja, of honoring our ancestors in the way that our ancestors themselves used to practice. We are going to continue that continuity beginning today. <laughs>